Hi you guys, sorry I couldn't be there tonight. Um, I got called into work, so I'm really sad to have missed this call. I'll have to listen to the recording. Um, my uh, small piece that I get to contribute today is how to handle objections. And this is something that we all deal with. Probably the majority of our messaging has to do with handling objections and how to um, walk through them gracefully, I suppose. So I think it's an important topic. Um, when I'm handling objections, I try as much as possible to use the feel, felt, found um, way of things. I say, um, for example, if somebody says it's too expensive, a challenge pack's too expensive, I'll say I, I totally know how you feel. When I first started, I just came out of internship, I was broke as a fool, um, and I felt the same way. I felt like it was too pricey, but what I have found is that the value of the products outspeaks the price like 10 to 1. I would pay hundreds more than I do now for what I've received and the quality of life that I'm living now is just much better and so worth it. So I try to um, just be empathetic with people and show them, listen, I know how you feel. I felt the same way, but this is what I have found. And you are showing them that you have knowledge on it, you've got wisdom on it, and they will listen to that. Um, if you receive a flat out no, it happens, hey, do not take it personally. Um, I try to think of rejections, I guess, as um, like with a similar analogy to a waitress serving coffee. Okay, so if I'm serving somebody coffee at Sabroso, um, if I ask them if they want coffee and they say no, I'm not personally offended. Like they just didn't want coffee. That's okay. Maybe tomorrow they'll want coffee, but they didn't want it today. Or maybe in a week they'll want coffee, but they didn't want it today. That's fine. And I just go to the next person. Hey, do you want coffee? No. Okay, that's fine. Next person. Hey, do you want coffee? Yeah, I do. Okay, sweet. Do you want cream and sugar? It's not a personal thing. It's just you offering a product and a service that could add value to their life that they may not want slash see value in at that moment, but it doesn't mean that they never will. So um, please don't take it personally. Just think of that coffee analogy. Um, really just try to be kind to people and just show them that they, you care uh, past the money, past the commission that most people assume that you make on it, okay? You can do this in ways like offering free services. So I always try to build strong relationships with people um, through free services, like a clean eating group, or sometimes if someone says, hey, it's too expensive for me right now, I really can't afford it. I'm like, you know what? I totally get it. But you can sign up for Beachbody On Demand for free, join the challenge group. I'm okay with it. Like, it's, I'm just trying to add value to your life. So they join the challenge group and then guess what? Usually at the end of the month, they're like, hey, I want to do another one. Can I get Shakeology? What's T25? It just pay it forward and it comes back tenfold. So just be kind. Uh, may not just be the right time for people. So my next um, topic here is, I, or sorry, thing, I guess, objection, is I don't have time. So this is um, sometimes true-ish, not really though because the workouts are only 25 minutes to 30 if you go with a couple different programs. Um, generally speaking, somebody saying I don't have time is just someone that is scared of failing. They just are, they don't want to commit the time to trying for themselves and they also don't see the value in it yet. They haven't been shown the value and they might, um, they might just not prioritize their health and fitness at this moment. They might not realize that that's something that they should do because we all should do that and we're lucky enough to have realized that. So um, I try to remind people of their goals that I find out when I'm forming them. And I just say like, listen, <laughs> these programs were made for busy people. Like the, pro the programs are literally 30 minutes. It takes two minutes to check into the challenge group and you have to eat anyways. So your meal prepping is only doing you a favor. So I just try to explain to them that it's not a huge time commitment. It's just them changing their mentality and, and shifting their perspective. Um, my next one that I wanted to chat about, I know I'm going over the mark here, um, Shaco is too expensive. So when someone tells me Shaco is too expensive, they are not seeing the value in it. They are seeing Shakeology as just a protein powder and they haven't learned anything else about it. So I just suggest that everybody really, really do your research. Um, I have a YouTube video up called Shakeology 101. If you want to look at it, I talk about the ingredients and how it's helped me. There's so many others. Shay Stanford did a national wake-up call on it. Um, there are YouTube videos from Darren Olin and like just the resources are there. So research and become knowledgeable because Shakeology is the one thing that will absolutely make your business fly with the residual income and helping people feel better. Um, when someone says Shakeology is too expensive, it's like I said, because they think of it as a protein powder. So I'm, I really have to debunk that really quickly with most people. So I say it's actually 
really good for what you get because Shakeology is a green supplement, which would be about $26 for a jar of that. It is a pre and probiotic, which is about $26 to $30 for like an acidophilus. And for vegan, people that want a dairy-free probiotic, you can't find that anywhere else other than Shaco. I've tried, trust me. It is also a multivitamin. I do not buy multivitamins anymore. It has my full vitamin and mineral complex that I need for the day. And it's a protein powder, which for any good protein powder alone, you're going to pay about 80 bucks, like Sun Warrior or whatever. Um, I know Vigo One, you can pay 30 bucks at Costco. And yes, I have drank it. But when someone says, I'm good on the Shaco, I've got Vigo One, I'm like, mm, listen, no, you're not. You just have a protein powder there, and that's it. And it does have some filler sometimes. I know Vigo does have one with uh, greens in it. Anyways, Shaco is the bomb.com. I've tried everything else, and this is that's the one that works for me. Um, my last one that I wanted to uh, point out here is just just be you. Be empathetic. Have integrity. Just be who you are, and people will fall in love with that, and they will trust you so much more uh, quickly before they trust a product. Just just be you and don't be out for the sale. People can read right through that. So if somebody's objecting, it might not be the right time for them. Follow up. That's all you have to do. Like, just show them that you actually care beyond the sale or commission that you're going to make. Keep in touch with them. Ask them. People love being, um, people love thinking that they're being thought about. Like, if you just reach out and say, hey, I was thinking about you. They're like, oh, you were thinking about me? Okay, thanks. People love that. So just, when you get objections, do not take it personally. Be kind. Leave every conversation, uh, making that person feel loved and welcomed. And you just never, you never know who's watching. So I think that's, it's twofold, right? So um, yeah, those are my tips that I have on how to handle objections. And if you have any questions about it, feel free to message me because I'm not on this call right now.